G'day, I'm Gary. I bent this rebar into an arch to create some ribs for my arched trellis or green tunnel. I've had a number of requests on how I built this, but in this video I'm just going to cover the basics on how I bent the rebar into this profile. I've got a setup in the other part of my yard, and what I'll do now is I'll take you over there and I'll explain it in detail. Okay, so now I'm in my outdoor workshop. I live in Southern California, so I can set up this outdoor space that I can leave year round. To build my arches, I use half inch or number four rebar in 20 foot lengths. I prefer to go to the store and select it myself. That way I get nice straight pieces. If you've ever worked with rebar, you'll probably already be familiar with the fact that once rebar is bent, it's very difficult to straighten out. As you can imagine, getting home 20 foot lengths of rebar may not be that easy, but I've rigged up something on the back of my truck so that I can safely bring it home. I'll get to that later in the video, but for now, I'll just go over how I built my platform. So to start off, what I needed was a nice flat surface that I could work on. So I built this platform so that I can use it over and over. I used salvage material, some plywood and some scrap lumber. I slapped it together using screws so if I don't need it I can move it out of the way. It's easy to put together and at the end of it I had a platform that measures 8 foot long by 7.5 foot wide. One of the sheets of plywood was a little narrower. One of the original owners of this property built these retaining walls. In doing so, they left behind a lot of rebar. Some of the pieces were half by 20 foot long and they were the original ones that I bent. I decided at one point to build arches in my garden. I think the best way to explain the profile of the arches would be to take you down to my garden and explain from there. I wanted to maximize the length of rebar and not cut it. So to create this space, I did a few measurements. I wanted a walkway that's seven foot wide and I wanted it to come up four feet. So the straight part of the rebar is four foot high. Then it makes the arch. This allows me to get as close to the sides as possible. I selected this height because I thought it wasn't bad. I could have shortened it or I could have buried the rebar into the ground to shorten it. But if I cut it, that would have been extra work. I didn't really want to do that. And at this height, I can harvest the fruit just by reaching up. So this is a good harvesting height for me. If you're going to make one yourself, you want to take into consideration these details. So I've got plenty of room in the centre to wheel a wheelbarrow and I can walk through and water my plants. So what I wanted to do is get the rebar so that would reinforce the remesh and these act as ribs. So what I'll do now is I'll show you how I set up my bender. Because I'm cold bending the rebar, knowing that it has a spring to it, the first thing I had to do was set up a test jig. To start things off, I measured and marked four feet up from the edge of the plywood. Then, using a two by two as a straight edge, I scribed a line between the two marks. After that, I added a couple of short pieces of two by fours, lining the ends up with the four foot line. They didn't have to be four foot long, they just had to be long enough to support the rebar so it wouldn't bend at the four foot mark. I lined them up parallel, leaving about a 5 8 of an inch gap, and I used two and a half inch deck screws to secure them to the plywood. Then along the four foot line, I made two marks, one at seven foot and one at three and a half feet. At the three and a half foot mark, I added a screw to attach the twine for my compass. I found that the twine moves freely around the screw. I could have used a nail. I took a four foot length of twine. After attaching one end to the screw, I stretched it out to the seven foot mark, made a simple loop, placed the tip of the pencil on the seven foot mark, and I pulled it taut. 
Now I had a simple compass that I used to describe a 7 foot radius. Since it's out in the elements, I periodically go over it with either a carpenter's pencil or an extreme sharpie just to make sure that the line remains visible. For my test jig, I added an extra 2x4. It was totally unnecessary and got in the way. To create the profile, I used scrap 2x4 blocks. The length wasn't important. Mine measured between 8 to 10 inches. I left the ends of the block square, laid them out against the inside line of the radius. Then, to hold them in place, I used two 3.5 inch deck screws to anchor them to the plywood. I used 11 of them to create the 7 foot radius. I spaced them roughly 8 to 12 inches apart. This spacing worked well. I could have used less blocks and spaced them further apart, but I was able to smoothly bend the rebar without any kinks. For what I want to do, I'm going to need quite a bit of rebar. I looked into having it delivered, but that was going to add a lot of extra cost. I plan to buy it as I need it, so I built a jig that fits on the back of my old pickup truck. It's a bit of a bush builder's job, but it's very sturdy and it's easy to assemble and disassemble. It's bolted together and I can store it and use it as I need it. After removing the tie downs, it's simply a matter of sliding it forward and sliding it back out of the jig. Before I show you how I bend the rebar, I'll cover a couple of safety issues. Rebar can be one of the most dangerous materials on a job site. So to protect my hands, I always wear a good pair of gloves. That'll protect me from the, any sharp edges. It'll also protect me from the heat. Rebar can get hot, especially in the summer. For that reason, I like to elevate it. That way it gets a little bit air cooled. If I left it straight on the ground, the heat will build up and it won't be able to dissipate. I also wear a good pair of safety goggles. I like the goggles that wrap around your head like this. In a couple of clips, you'll see that I wasn't wearing goggles. That was just for filming. And this is especially important if you've got more than one person working with you. I work alone, so I know where the ends of the rebar are. But when you've got multiple people working in the same space, you may not know where the ends are and people can get hurt. With that, I'll show you how I bend it. To start the bend, I lay the rebar between the two blocks with the tip level with the end of the plywood. Then I grabbed the middle of the rebar and started to bend it around the arch blocks. When you cold bend rebar, it has a lot of spring to it and it wants to retain its shape. If I had an oxyacetylene torch or some other heat source, it would hold its shape. I made this first jig to the dimensions of the finished profile that I was looking for. This allowed me to do the calculations that are necessary to compensate for the spring. I flipped the rebar around so I could accurately get a mirrored profile. I repeated the same steps as I did for the first bend. I placed the rebar in between the two blocks and I lined the end of the rebar up with the edge of the plywood. Then I bent it around the arch block. With this simple jig, I've found that it's easy enough for me to bend half inch rebar by myself. After I finished bending the rebar, I measured tip to tip to see how far off I was. To do the math, I wrote the results down on a clipboard. I didn't have to really do that because the math was very simple. The spring was actually double of what I wanted, so it measured around 14 feet. So the next step was to reconfigure the jig by halving the radius of the arch by 50%. So I removed the blocks from my 7 foot arch. I still have the line drawn around. I'm going to use that as a guide. I've set my new blocks up at 3.5 feet or 42 inches. So it's just a matter of coming out 21 inches from the edge of this block. I attached a screw in the center. That's along the same line. Again I attached a piece of string, made a simple loop dropped it over the screw and on the other end I did the same. I made a loop, put the pencil in and I scribed the line into an arch. 
then I attach the blocks using two deck screws. To make the blocks more secure, I prop the working side of the jig between two saw horses. Then I attach the blocks to some blocks that would be on the bottom of the jig. Now I have my three and a half foot arch blocks in place. I can start bending. Okay, so the first thing I do is I get my 20 foot length of rebar, lay it down in my jig, and make sure that the end is level with the plywood. Then I grab it somewhere in the center and I work my way around. Just bend it around and as I move along, I work further out. So I overbend it a little bit. Then I pick it up, flip it over, do the same thing on the other side. Set that up level with the end again. Get that right. So what I'm trying to do, I want to bend it in a mirror shape. I'll bend from both sides. It's fairly straightforward. It's easy enough to bend half inch rebar this way. Now, you might notice that the top's flat and this is where it becomes a little bit more of an art. So place it in the center of the arch blocks, grab both ends, I start pulling it back. I work it to one side, work it to the other and as I go around I try to even it up and I sit it back in here. And I check it with my line that I marked out. So when I look at it and I get it pretty good, I'm done. So that's my first arch. I showed bending the first one in real time. As you see, it didn't take long at all. When I bend them, I bend them in pairs. I then line them up in the jig to compare the two. If I need to make any adjustments, I can do so at this point, and I get a really good level of consistency. If I need more for my project, I bend all of them at the same time. This has been a long video with a lot of detail in it. So to help you out, I added some chapters and timestamps. You can find that in the description section of the video. If you want to save this video and watch it later on, I suggest hit the save button and you can add it to a playlist. I like to create my own playlist. So if I've got something interesting, like a project I may want to do later on, I add videos to that. And that way it's easier to find it. When you're ready to do your project, you can go back and get a refresher. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Feel free to leave a comment, share it on your favorite social media. I'll be doing a number of other projects using my rebar arches. This is just the first one that I did. In another video, I'll cover this one and my main one, but this was the first test one that I did and it worked out really well. I did this last year and this is the growth that I've got on it this year. So with that, thanks for watching and don't forget to eat what you grow. I'll catch you later.